NASA has chosen five companies to assure consistent flights to the moon with the Artemis mission, despite its continuing dispute with Blue Origin over a lunar landing contract to SpaceX. A $146 million contract has been given to five businesses to develop human landing system designs, conduct risk reduction efforts, and offer feedback on NASA's objectives to grow industry capabilities for crewed lunar landing missions. Welcome back, fellas. We're back with another update from the world of space. But before that, we're welcoming you all to the YouTube channel. We upload daily updates from Space World. If you're new to this channel, we welcome you and are glad to have you with us. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss an update. NASA chose five businesses from the most current update, the majority of which have been already worked on delivering space-based technology. Here's a list of the firms that have been chosen as well as the funding that have been allotted to them to develop moon-based landing concepts. Blue Origin allotted with $25.6 million in funds, Dynetics with $40.8 million, Lockheed Martin with $35.2 million, Not Rob Grumman with $34.8 million, and SpaceX with $9.4 million in funds. The firms will create the lander design concepts and test them for performance, design, construction standards, mission assurance requirements, interfaces, safety, crew health accommodations, and medical capabilities. NASA also stated that they will reduce lunar landing risks by undertaking crucial component tests and enhancing the maturity of key technologies. SpaceX and Blue Origin are among the five U.S. businesses chosen by NASA to develop moon landing prototypes. The contracts were issued by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration under the agency's Artemis program for a total of $146 million, according to a release. Blue Origin Federation won $25.6 million, while SpaceX received $9.4 million. The chosen firms will create lander design concepts over the next 15 days, analyzing their performance, design, construction standards, mission assurance demands, interfaces, safety crew health accommodations, and medical capabilities. The firms will also reduce the risk associated with the lunar landings by completing crucial component tests and enhancing the maturity of key technologies. Establishing a long-term human presence on the moon through recurrent services using lunar landers is a primary Artemis goal, said Kathy Luders, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations at NASA headquarters in Washington. This essential step establishes U.S. leadership in knowing more about the moon and learning how to live and work in deep space for future trips deeper into the solar system. These contracts are distinct from the human landing system contract awarded to SpaceX earlier this year, which is still being contested. Blue Origin received $26.5 million, Dynetics received $40.8 million, Lockheed Martin received $35.2 million, Northrop Grumman received $34.8 million, and SpaceX received $9.4 million. Blue Ridge Nebula Starlines and Cook and & Cavalier Enterprises were the only two companies that did not get contracts despite submitting proposals. The contracts were issued under Next Step 2 Appendix N, Sustainable Human Landing System Studies and Risk Reduction, Next Space Technologies for Exploration Partnerships. The contract's goal, according to the RFP, is to engage with possible commercial partners for concept studies sustaining HLS, concept of operations, that's ground and flight development, and risk reduction initiatives. In practice, this means that the selected businesses will create lander design proposals, including component testing, and evaluate them for factors such as performance and safety. These awards are distinct from the human landing system contract awarded to SpaceX earlier this year, which both Blue Origin and Dynetics contested to a government watchdog, and which Blue Origin then objected in a lawsuit against NASA that is still pending. However, the results of this round of awards will most likely influence future lander development, contracts for the rest of the decade. The work of these businesses will ultimately help establish the approach and specifications for a future NASA request to offer frequent astronaut transportation from lunar orbit to the moon's surface, the agency said in a statement. Blue Origin's plan is the result of its national team which includes Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and Draper. That's Lockheed and Northrop were also awarded individual separate contracts under Appendix N. According to a Blue Origin spokeswoman, under this contract, the national team will perform crucial studies and risk reduction operations that will lead to future sustainable lander designs. We will also collaborate closely with a number of other organizations and NASA field centers across the country on this project. 
Artemis program was launched in 2020 with a number of goals, including not just returning humans to the moon for the first time since Apollo, but also making such travel routine by the late 2020s. NASA isn't content with merely exploring the moon. It also wants to extend into interplanetary exploration, including human expedition to Mars. As a major partner to NASA and a positive example of how commercial collaborations may function effectively, Northrop Grumman delivers a proven record of accomplishment in human space exploration, said Steve Crin, Northrop Grumman's VP of Civil and Commercial Satellites. We will also continue to collaborate with Blue Origin and the national team to achieve NASA's lofty goals of returning to the Moon and Mars. Nonetheless, NASA has temporarily halted work on the 2.9 billion lunar lander contract, even as Musk intervened in the lawsuit to ensure that the court has a complete and accurate picture of the facts and circumstances surrounding the protest, including the substantial harm that SpaceX will suffer if the court grants the relief sought by Blue Origin. The protracted battle might jeopardize the Artemis mission's timeline, which involves landing the first woman and person of color on the lunar surface, deploying a package of new science instruments and technology demos to explore the moon and establishing a long-term presence there. NASA's plan to reach the moon entails sending astronauts in the Orion spacecraft, unlike the Apollo mission, which includes a lander. The next generation of lunar explorers will encounter a separate lander vehicle orbiting above the moon, which will transport them back and forth to the surface below. NASA commissioned private companies to construct it. NASA wanted to select two companies to develop moon landers, but Congress only provided funding for one. The space agency eventually chose SpaceX's proposal because it was the cheapest and most technically sound. According to the GAO, NASA officials asked SpaceX to add two more FRRs to their plan so that each vehicle type would be reviewed before launch. One review for the tankers, one for the possible depot, and one for the starship carrying the humans. If all goes as planned, these advancements will aid NASA Artemis mission, which aims to return humans to the lunar surface within the next few years and to create a sustained human presence on and around the moon by the end of the decade. Artemis will rely on crude lunar landers produced by private companies. NASA chose SpaceX to supply the first of these vehicles, awarding Elon Musk's business a 2.9 billion human landing system, or HLS, contract in April. The contract will be fulfilled by the company's next generation Starship vehicle, which is presently in development. We can expect a lot to come up. With this, we have reached the end of the video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to never miss an update. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you again tomorrow with another news from space. Stay tuned.